Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren, thank you so much for watching. It's been a journey with my hair today, so, you know, just <laughs> stick with me through that throughout this whole video. Today though, I am really happy to be doing a favorites and kind of fails video. I have some new products to talk about, some new like rediscoveries to talk about, and I'm so excited to do that. I feel like I tend to have the same fucking favorites over and over, and I'm excited that I have some different things that I've been testing to share with you, but there are the fails. <laughs> and I've realized maybe I should freaking listen to reviews because three out of the five things that are disappointing to me probably could have been avoided if I had done that. Although I also know myself and I know that sometimes I just, I gotta know for myself, you know, like I'm like, maybe I'm the one that will work on. Well, that wasn't the case for these ones, but uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy just hanging out, talking about some good stuff, some disappointing stuff. And of course, I'd love to know what you've been loving in the comments. And then I did do a try on situation, a demo, a tutorial, get ready with me, whatever at the end. So that will be there. If you want to see these products in action, you kind of want to just see how I did this face. It will be later. So, okay, let's get into it. First favorite on my list. This is from Tarte and it is the Maracuja Juicy Lip Plum. I bought this during the Sephora VIB sale and I really quite like this product you guys I'm wearing it today. This is it like not sheared out if you shear it out just beautiful glossy plump lips This feels like a lip balm to me. I don't find that I get the white ring of death, which is amazing So I don't feel like if I'm wearing this out I have to be super like cautious of how much I'm talking or you know, just checking up on that. So I love that. Again, this formula is really plush and plump and moisturizing. It gives you shine without too much shine. It's not like overly sticky. It just feels nourishing. I love the smell on this it's coconutty, um, but I will say this has a mint moment also. So there is something kind of plumping from mint. And I know a lot of people don't like mint in their lip products. So if that's you, this will not work for you. I don't remember that being the case with the other one I have though. So I don't know if the the lip plump or this specific line in the rose gold packaging I feel like these are newer shades I don't know if that just happens in these ones but I've really been enjoying it definitely a great pickup during the Sephora sale and um, kind of surprising you know I don't pick up a ton of stuff from Tarte but this is really really good and they have a bunch of different shades as well I had to fetch this out of my purse so I always know that's like a good thing like if I'm wearing this out and want to you know, have it to touch up. That means I like it. So that is my first favorite. Really happy with this purchase. Let's talk about a rediscovery. And this I rediscovered through my shop, my stash. And this is the Tower 28 blush, the cream one in Beach Please. Oh, I think that's the Beach Please blushes in Magic Hour. I believe this is like the classic shade. I was excited to get this and I did like it when I tried this probably about a, a year ago at this point. And so, yeah, I liked it, whatever. But through my shop, my stash, I've been wearing this almost every single day. This applies like a dream with my fingers, with a sponge, with a brush. It doesn't matter. It's beautiful. And I find if I'm going for a really easy look, I can just put this on for my blush and it gives me a nice amount of color, but not too much. It's not too pigmented where it's hard to work with. It's not too sheer where, you know, it's like, okay, I got things to do. <laughs> and I also like the texture of this because it's not too liquidy where um, it's kind of removing products. Sometimes that can be an issue. And so I just, I've been loving it. The color also is really quite perfect for me on its own again, or as a base for so many other blushes. So I find I'm getting a lot of use out of this, even on days when I'm wearing other powder blushes because I can use this underneath them when I'm putting all my cream products on like right after my foundation and stuff and so really been loving this like every single day I want to retort I'm like oh yeah let's do that again and I'm just happy to have rediscovered it I'm happy it's getting so much more use out of my collection and I'm glad I didn't like get rid of it or declutter it just because I wasn't feeling the love for it in the moment because now I am feeling the love for it <laughs> and so I'm so happy about that I don't know if I'll pick up other colors like there's a part of me that's tempted but I think I'm gonna resist the temptation and just like enjoy the shit out of this one I also really like the packaging too it's just so easy easy to apply this where you can just get something in it real fast get on your your face there's no like barrier sometimes with like creams and like liquids that are in squeeze tubes you know you have to undo it put it on the back of your hand then go for it this just is ready to go it looks disgusting <laughs> but it's easy to use <laughs> absolutely love that i feel like i should have put a little highlighter on my 
Let's do this, let's do this. This is my next favorite, which is also another throwback, but try to highlight, <laughs> look all sexy, or at least summery. Are you guys excited for summer? Cause I'm starting to feel it. I'm like, it's almost, like we're May. Can you believe it's May? I don't know if that did anything, but I can't just have it on one watch. It like darkened my shoulder only in that area. <laughs> Looks all freaky the rest of the video. Can you tell a difference? I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm excited for summer. I'm like starting to get into the vibes. I'm like, ooh, maybe it'll be fun. But then I always get there and it's like hot and stuff. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's talk about the product I just applied. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. You can't tell because the packaging has completely wiped off. Kind of annoying because I'm telling you, I don't remember like using this a ton. I mean, I used it for sure, but I can't believe that the, the writings come off. Anyway, loving this lately. Again, through my Shop My Stash, I've rediscovered this product. I've been using it under my foundation. That's my personal favorite way to use it. Um, and it adds such a beautiful glowy look. Now, if I'm gonna use like a super glowy primer, I will not use this also because, you know, I, I'm not the type to say there's too much, too much glow, like that can happen, but I think it could happen. <laughs> I think if you did that, it might be a little much, but do you, if you like it, go for it. I think this just adds such a beautiful radiance underneath your foundation. I am oily, I get oily, but I like to look healthy. And I know on camera, sometimes it can look a little sweaty. And in real life, sometimes it's a little sweaty too, but there's something healthy about it. Like last night I had this beautiful makeup look on. <laughs> no, but you know, it was at the end of the night um, and I was looking in the mirror. I don't know why, but the mirror in my living room makes my makeup always. I'm like, oh my gosh, Sam, look at my makeup, it looks so good. However the lighting hits in there, it's just, it doesn't matter if it's day, night, doesn't matter. Something about how it all, the light bounces around. Always the sparkles on my eyes, my skin, everything looks amazing. If only we could all be in that mirror, I'm telling you. Anyway, my makeup just looked so, so glowy. Like definitely you could get in there and pat some oils off, but the oils were so perfect. Like it was such a beautiful even coverage that it just looked really healthy actually. So anyway, I credit this product and a couple other products too, we'll get to that, for making that happen. And I've just really been enjoying this too. Really happy to have it rediscovered this because it's so fucking exciting expensive and I've already bought it, you know, like I already have it. I have the shade number one, just so you guys know. It's also really pretty on its own if you want kind of a no makeup makeup look where you want something glowy. I find this gives the tiniest bit of coverage so it just tames down my redness a little bit and that could also be really quite pretty. This one you probably aren't surprised to see in here if you've been watching all my different videos where I'm doing my makeup on camera. This is from Sigma, it's a newer release. It's the Color Correcting Duo. I have mine in light to medium and this is very similar to the Becca under eye corrector which I loved for a very long time. I still have the tiniest bit left in mine and I always go in phases with that product so like I'll be into it, love it, use it every day and then <laughs> kind of get out of it and then rediscover it later and um, instead of rediscovering that product I've been using this and this is really nice. I love the packaging. I love that it's a duo. I mean I don't think I need both. I could probably have just one of them but I just tap in between all of them, use my ring finger and I like applying this with my finger best because I feel like it just really massages the product a bit more into the skin. It's nice and warm instead of a brush. Like I just find fingers, sponges work better on my skin and the texture and just kind of the issues that it has. But if you have skin that's a little bit more forgiving, I'm sure you could just use a brush. Um, this is very similar to the Becca except that this isn't as soft but it's as emollient if that makes sense. So I feel like you get the creamy like the good benefits of how the Becca one is, where it's creamy, easy to blend in. I feel like it's moisturizing, but I don't find it as tacky. I don't find it moves around as much. I don't get as much like transferring. So I really love this. And again, I like the packaging a lot more as well. So really, really into this. I just use this. So I don't even use a concealer. I don't have the, the worst under eye darkness, but I find that this is enough for me. And I also can use it just like I did the Becca. I know I keep comparing them, but I feel like they're quite similar with a few distinct differences. Don't get me wrong, but I will tap this onto like redness I have, and this helps cover that as well. So for me, when I don't have too many breakouts or anything, and I'm getting a decent amount of sleep. This is perfect. I don't need anything else and it feels nice and lightweight under my eyes. I really have liked it actually more than something with more coverage. I like that this is just kind of color correcting, adding a little coverage, but um, concealers can sometimes 
just look heavy. They look a little heavy sometimes. I don't know if that's me just applying too much, but I've been liking this. <laughs> I've been liking this a lot. So that's definitely a favorite. And they did send me this. I don't think I mentioned that, but I do get PR from Sigma, but they've just been killing it lately, honestly. Like I feel like so many of their new releases are so much better than some of their past ones. Next, let's talk about some eyeshadows. I've been loving this little duo. This is what I used on my eyes today. This is from NARS. It's the Kalahari duo. I don't believe this is available anymore. I hate to say that, but the last time I talked about this, I tried to put it in the description box and it was sold out on the NARS website and I didn't see it for sale anywhere else. So I have a feeling <laughs> <laughs> this is gone. So I'm really sorry, but really, I mean, the NARS formula is great. So if you have other shadows from NARS or like colors from NARS that you think would work for you, that would be great. And also, of course, you could just have similar colors to this because that's one of the reasons I love this duo. I'm really into these kind of taupey, bronzy, almost purpley type of shades for one shadow, easy looks. Um, today, I mostly use the shimmer and then a little bit of this on the outer corner, a little bit. This makes doing an eye look so easy. I don't have to put any thought into what I'm doing. I just kind of do this on the lid and get out the door, add some mascara, I look put together. I can do something a little bit lighter or go a little more smoky, I feel like, today it's a little bit more glam and I love that I can also add like a sparkly top coat if I really want to like you know pump up the sparkles so loving this so much really glad I purchased it it's my repurchase of this palette because I used to have it in like the old formula and in the old formatting and um, yeah I don't know I just was craving it and sometimes when that happens I just put it off put it off put it off but I'm glad I it was a, a successful repurchase and I'm glad I, I got it back in my collection. I've been using it so, so much. Last makeup item I want to mention. This is the Peach and Lily Glass Skin Veil Mist Hydrating Glow. I know this is pretty hyped up. I feel like it's a hyped up product. I'm going to go again. I think that the hype's real, okay? Um, I got this from BoxyCharm, so I got to try this out for I think maybe 12 bucks. Like, I love that. I know they had it even cheaper lately, and I have a feeling I might repurchase this or like even get some backups. It's very, very good. I wouldn't, well, I would pay full price. If you really wanna try it, you can't find a deal on it, you don't have a ton of other stuff, and you're like, I think it will really work. I think it's that good that it's worth full price, but you know me, I just, I want a deal on everything I can get a deal. <laughs> Anyway, this adds a really beautiful glow to your skin. It doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't feel oily. I feel like it's in the realm of like the Tatcha mist, but that one makes you feel oily and greasy. It's in the realm of like the MAC Fix Plus, but this doesn't have the smell, but it has a better sprayer. So, you know, you got to kind of compromise there, but it's beautiful. And I just think the hype is super real. This is perfect if you don't like highlighter, like you don't want something shimmery looking, but you want that healthy dewy look. You want to look like you're hydrated and glowing from within this gives you that if you have just a little too much powder on your skin from whatever you're doing this will kind of revive that I use it exactly how I like to use my Mac one and I feel like it just works beautifully so beautiful really great highly suggest I think the hype is worth it I'm very glad to have it last couple of things I have to mention a perfume you guys I know this has been my favorite perfume lately like I'm obsessed with it and so I feel like if you don't like watching the perfume videos this is kind of the short the short of it I recently purchased the juice box cheeky smile I always want to call it cheeky slime but it's not it's smile <laughs> this is a beautiful ambery woody kind of musky fragrance oh my gosh it's so so good if you like molecule type scents if you like baccarat um i feel like you might like this like i don't think you should blind buy it because it's kind of expensive but i think it's worth a sniff if you like those types of scents so main accords on this amber woody musky and then in the notes for this it has iso e super ambroxinonide <laughs> ambroxin amber amber extreme and cashmere in, okay like that's my dream i'm learning that i really like amber heavy sense that smell kind of burnt or toasty and this one on my skin especially kind of sweetens up a little bit so it has that thing I like about Baccarat that kind of toasted spun sugar kind of scent I don't think this is nearly as sugary or as sweet so I don't want to give you guys the wrong idea that this is some gourmand perfume or something but it is just so beautiful definitely woody it has that amber resinous quality it kind of sweetens up on my skin again it has that like burnt toasty thing going on not burnt as in smoky it's like toasted so good it's everything i love and this is perfect for layering as well so any of my perfumes that i love because i tend to just like if a perfume has that kind of burnt 
quality, has that kind of toasted quality to it. That's like what I love about the perfume and this can just amplify it. So I love using it as a layering scent. Sam loves this. It's like perfectly unisex and I highly suggest it. I don't feel like I hear anyone talking about it, but I really feel like people who love those things about Baccarat or who love that kind of thing, you might like this. So um, I did purchase this off of Twisted Lily. I bought it myself, but I have a code. So if you want to try a sample, you can sample it on there and it's pretty affordable. I think it's like five dollars that's what I literally did I was like I think this will be perfect for me sampled it and it was like I was obsessed with that sample ran it all the way through and then was like I need to get this in my life the sprayer on this is pretty interesting because it's like a let's see almost like body mist mmm Mm, it's so good. Sam and I did this whole sampling at a park and it was so much fun and that's where we fell in love with this little guy. So I really love this. I don't feel like I hear much about juice box in general as a perfume company and I feel like everyone's sleeping on Cheeky Smile. So I really love that. It's like one of my favorite perfumes at the moment. Although I'm starting to get into like white florals, like marshmallowy white florals and I don't know who I am. <laughs> I'm like, who are you? What's happening? Okay, last thing I want to mention, a hand soap because naturally it's me. Hi. This is the terracotta canyon hand soap from bath and body works and i'm just mentioning this because this smells so expensive for bath and body works i'm like this smells so good it has golden amber i told you i freaking love amber desert jasmine and warm sandalwood this just smells way too expensive for what it is i'm like what what? If you want to smell like your house is a rich bougie hotel, this smells amazing and I just think you should try it out. I bought it from online. I hadn't bought any uh, hand soaps from Bath and Body Works in a while and I just went on there. I don't know. They were having a sale. Something was happening and that one just sounded really great. So I was like, I'm going to try it out. I'm obsessed with it. I bought a few more because I'm that into it. I'm almost done with it. And the hand soaps from Bath and Body Works, I have to say, they are just superior to a lot of like cheaper hand soaps. I'm sorry, they are. The way that this foams, um, you guys know I love my like scrubby, gritty hand soaps. I love those, the really bougie expensive ones. I know, <laughs> I hate myself for it too. But this for a more affordable option, although it's still, don't get me wrong, expensive. If you can find it on a deal, I do think that it's worth it. And the foam is so rich and luxurious feeling. It's like velvet. Um, Sam even mentioned, he was like, man, that feels good. That soap feels nice. So I was like, I know. So um, love this, especially though, mostly the scent. This scent, beautiful. And I wish that Bath and Body Works would do more stuff like this. I feel like they tend to go super fruity, you know, just like loud scents. And this one is strong, but it is a little bit more like a perfume. Like if they had a perfume of this, I would buy it. I would buy it and wear it. It smells so good. And honestly, it just smells way more expensive than it should, <laughs> than I expect it to. So those are my favorites. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing about some of those. I'd love to know if you've tried any, what your thoughts are. Let's get into the disappointments though, because these are the things that I don't recommend you buy. I don't necessarily hate and we'll get into that. I just have feeling I just you know I don't need these. Okay first let's talk about this from Mac and this is Warm Soul. I was so excited to finally I'm throwing it around, my gosh. I was so excited to finally get this in my collection. I was like, I'm gonna do it. I bought a few different MAC products. I bought like face and body. I eh, don't know how I feel about that. Although that's kind of a color issue. I also bought a lipstick and I bought this, okay? This is pretty, it looks so pretty in the pan. It's a baked formula. I was like, this is what I'm into. But you know, for all the hype I've heard about this for years, this did not perform to me. This did not meet my expectations. It is so light. I thought that it would look maybe more brown, but it turns quite peachy and um, like almost pinky on me. It's hard to get pigment off of here. And I like a subtle blush, but man, even on like, I use like coarser brushes and it's still like a chore to build it up. Like it is a chore to build this up. And um, I mentioned that I didn't love this in my declutter video. And a lot of you guys were like, yeah, they've changed the formula. Uh, like from the old one and I was like oh my gosh you're right I for I just forgot that that happened right so I feel like I could have maybe avoided it I just just forgot that thing and I'm like yeah it's different I I can see that this is not what everyone hyped up I don't think because I don't know you guys know I love a subtle <laughs> blush this exact color like formula everything and this is not doing it and I really feel like I was biased to love this and I do not. Disappointed. It's not the worst. I don't know if I'm gonna like get rid of it. Maybe at some point I'll want like a whisper of a blush, like where it a LaCroix of a blush, you know, but um, right now not quite what I was hoping for. Um, so just disappointing. 
disappointing, okay? If I had remembered that and remembered some of those reviews, then I think I could have saved myself a little bit of money, especially for like $30, like what the hell? Next disappointment, also should have just listened to reviews, but I couldn't be stopped, okay? <laughs> This is from Pat McGrath. This is the Intensifies Artistry Wand. The idea of this sucked me in. It's Pat McGrath, she does these beautiful looks and you know, she uses that filter <laughs> and she has those sparkly eyeshadows and she goes, puts this on someone's eye, taps in a, a beautiful shadow on a brush or with her finger, whatever, looks amazing, right? So I was like, Fuck yeah. I love the idea of a primer going on your eyes, maybe not being super sticky, but like having enough tact to like hold something and just intensify it just enough exactly where you want it. You don't have to get your fingers involved. No, this is bullshit. <laughs> This is, I'm sorry to say it, snake oil, bull crap, you guys. Okay, first off, I'm a little disappointed how cheap the packaging feels for $32, this is $32, oh my gosh, okay, I know. It's also in the click up pen formula I hate. I've started to click it up way past, so that way, again, it doesn't scrape my eye as I'm like applying the product. This, I like feel like I don't know what's going on when I try to apply it. I'll put it on and I expect it to feel at least slightly tacky, at least slightly wet. Nothing happened. So I'm like, okay. And initially I used it quite a few times over other powders, you know, um, like I'd already done some of my eye look and then I'm gonna go over so I can add my lid shade. That didn't seem like the way to go. So I was like, you know what? Fine, fine. I'm gonna try it on a bare, bare lid, you know, and just kind of have the tact I already have going on for my lid. I did that and still this doesn't look that great. Um, it just doesn't really add anything sticky at all. It's just no better than just your plain lid, okay? And I just feel like if you really want hold, this isn't gonna give you hold. It's barely gonna give you a tacky finish. I feel like use Vaseline. Honestly, use a dab of Vaseline fucking better than this as in terms of like getting it to stick onto your eye. Not long term, it probably will crease on you, but you know, at least it's sticking to your eye. Or just use a glitter glue and you're gonna have more hold and longevity. So, I just don't understand this product. The reviews are pretty bad. I would say most people fucking hate this and I should have listened to them and I did not. I didn't listen. I thought that the fantasy of that product was so amazing, but it is just that a fantasy. If you can get that to work, let me know. Obviously I'd love to make it work, but I just don't. What is it doing? <laughs> it does nothing. It's like a semi, I, I do not get it. I literally don't know what it does. Okay, next, this was a purchase I made from BoxyCharm. I, you guys know I love buying stuff on the BoxyCharm sales. There's so many great discounts and it's a fun way for me to discover new products like the Peach and Lily at a discount. And sometimes there's just bust. So this is from Vesca. I was really interested in Vesca products. I hadn't really heard of the brand and uh, I wanted to try them. They seem like they could be this cool, clean girl look. Like, you know what I mean? Like that whole cool aesthetic of beauty right now where it's like fresh and kind of natural. I was like, I'm down. This is a highlighter from them in the shade Wish and I just don't love it. Okay, it looks like it's playing me right now where it's like, look how pretty I am, but I don't, I can't get this to apply like that on my face. Maybe I really need to try to buff it in. Looks so pretty on my hand right now. This peach color though, it's just, a little bit more powdery, a little bit more pigmented and like opaque than I like my highlighters. I really like something thin and gelée, high shine, that type of stuff. This just isn't it and I was just surprised when I got it. And mm, this is a lie. I can't get it to look like that on my face like ever, ever. Man, shimmery powders, like they can just play you in the lights <laughs> because like I said, it just doesn't look like that in real life. That one's not like that big of a deal, but I've been trying different things from Vesca. I want it to be good. Some things are okay. Other things I just haven't enjoyed. So I don't really know. Let me know if you've tried stuff from them. Have you heard of that brand? Be like, does anyone talk about that? I don't know. Is that like a real brand or just like a boxy brand? You know what I mean? <laughs> Unfortunately guys, next Hindash's Mono Chromance Palette. I know I've been trying to use this and so far my my thoughts on this, I don't hate this. I don't hate the formula. I think that it can be okay. What I don't like about it is that you get shit tons of hard pan. Now I know you're not supposed to stick your little fingers in here and I did and that's why I got the hard pan, like I get it, but still. 
I still don't like it. I still don't like it. I like the idea of this palette and I do think that the formula is very unique. Like it is different than any formula I've ever used. And so in some ways I do think it's like worth the money for that because I feel like it's like innovative in its own way, right? I just don't know how much I love the formula for me. I know a lot of people do. So this is one where you might have to like, if you're that interested in it, you might have to try it yourself. You could be in the court of people who think that it's not that good and it's kind of a lot of money for what it is. Or you could be in the court of people who like love it. I find that this works best actually for like face stuff because I do think this formula is really great at looking like it's under the skin, like looking like a part of the skin. It's not powdery in absolutely any way. No kick up when you use a brush in this. And so I want to like it. I really want to like it, but I just, don't, it feels messy. It doesn't inspire me in the ways that I thought. Um, I also had issues with, I, you know, took this and just wanted to put the mirror back and here we go, you know, like this just popped up and that just sucked. Like, I just haven't had the best experience and I really wanted to like it. I'm not gonna get rid of it in my collection. It's one of those things I feel like at a different part in my life, maybe this will become my new favorite. But right now, I guess my thoughts on it are just like, it's disappointing. It's not like a bad product. It's not like it doesn't work. It's just a disappointing buy for me and not something that I would go back to repurchase and like have again as an experience. I wouldn't. I don't know, that's just what I think. It's just, I think the formula is definitely unique and it's just a baffling little thing. A baffling little thing. I am thinking though that I'm coming more on the side of being disappointed. It's tough, but that's the truth. That's how I feel. I think this is the last disappointing product and this is from Laura Mercier. I bought this also during the sale and I actually swatched this in store. So I think I'm like more disappointed by that. Like motherfucker, I really tried to know that I would like this color. This is the metallic taupe eyeshadow stick from Laura Mercier. Um. You're sitting here being like that, you don't like that? Like, are you okay? I know guys, I know, that's why I bought it. <laughs> this swatch is why I bought it, okay? But the issue is that when you put this on the eye, you're not doing this, you blend it out. And my issue is in the blend out. I just don't think it looks as pretty as it should when it's blended out. You can see the individual sparkles in this product in a way that I just find mm, isn't as fancy and isn't the like love moment I have with regular moonlight or with the other regular shadows like the non-metallic ones I've used. So it's kind of tricky. It looks so good in an opaque swatch, but then on your eye blending it out, I remember being like, what the heck? And again, one of you left me a comment saying, don't do it. They're not that good actually, blah, blah, blah. And I read that and I still went and bought this. <laughs> and I should have listened to you, I'm so sorry for doubting you. But I just thought, oh no, I'll like it. Like maybe you didn't like it for a reason, but no, I agree with you. <laughs> it's just not as special. So I think you should stick to the regular formula then over the metallic, even though it's like trying to charm you into buying it from swatching it in store. I get it, but I do think that it's a different formula. It just doesn't look as good on the eyes as you expect, again, these lights make you say, Lauren, you're lying, but I'm telling you, on the eyes, not as special. And those are all of my faves and fails as of late. I don't know if I'm gonna start doing a monthly favorites video. It depends on what I'm trying because when you aren't trying tons of new products, you don't have tons of stuff to talk about either way, but hopefully I can do them a little bit more regularly. I tried to keep it pretty contained and I think they can be actually fun. And I think for a while I really was like, it shouldn't be in a favorites video unless it's like your diehard only thing you'll ever use in your life and I, I get that perspective obviously like I get that but I do think that like a little bit of a monthly favorites video kind of checking in on what you're using right then is fun too like it's okay it doesn't have to be that deep like my god you know anyway let me know what you think but um if you want to see how I did this look using some of these products in action I even used some of the fails so you could see those too then just keep watching let's get into the look all right guys let's get started on the look I'm actually gonna take my ring off for a second because I don't like getting lotions on it. I hate that shit. Anyway, I'm gonna prime really fast. I've already moisturized and everything. I'm using the First Aid Beauty. This is like a moisturizer, but I use it on top of all my normal skincare. I do not like sub this personally. I use it more for the priming effect than I do only for moisture. I think you could use it, but I don't know. I like to be very supple. Okay, love that. I have no idea how my hair looks. I took a shower last night and wet my hair and then went to sleep and it wasn't all the way dry. I don't know if your hair does it, but now it looks a little like little pointy, a little, 
My head looks a little pointy, I don't know. I don't love that, but I'm hoping by the time my makeup's done, it'll be like beautiful and like distract from that. But anyway, I'm using the Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury. Fell in love with this. I've been loving this. So glowy, you guys, like. <laughs> It's very glowy. Sometimes I use a brush to disperse it. Other times I just use my hands. But man, I don't know why I wasn't using this more. I'm glad I like rediscovered it in my collection. Definitely something I've been enjoying with the Shop My Stash is like using older products and then really giving them multiple, multiple days wear in a row. And you can really start to like get to know a product again, especially if it's been a while since you've used it. And sometimes you get to know stuff and it sucks. And other times you get to know stuff again and you're like, well, hello, I guess it's the right season that we're meeting because I love you. So glowy, so dewy. This adds the tiniest bit of coverage, honestly, too. So if you really wanted a light coverage, like basically no makeup makeup, but you like that dewy, glowy look, beautiful, beautiful. For foundation today, I'm mixing too. My fave, 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 the Ensa, but I put a little bit of the Kosas in it yesterday and I liked the way that looked. So I'm gonna do that again today. All right, got a pretty nice coverage. You'll see, I'm gonna zoom us in. Oh my God, my hair looks a mess. I'm gonna have to do something. I wanna zoom you guys in though for this next part because this is where I'm gonna be using the corrector, another one of my faves. This one is the light to medium. This is what I've been using for the most part for almost a concealer. Like, So I'll sometimes mix and I just tap on with my ring finger. I find this is best, although there is a brush from Sigma that's quite nice as well. So that's it. I mean, I don't have super dark under eyes really, but I think this gives me just enough coverage without being too much. I get a little creasing, but I get a little creasing with everything. I have like this one kind of almost roll, I guess, under my eyes that collects product, but I tend to just let it collect there and then just wipe it away and I don't find it like collects again. And I find it to look just so natural and I'll even use this on areas where I want a little bit more coverage so I have a little redness on my cheek sometimes. I'll just tap over that. And then my nose right now is not looking the best. So sometimes I'll just tap a little bit of this over my nose as well, just to almost give it a little bit more coverage, just where I need it. And I find that can sometimes help it out as well. And I think it's just really beautiful, nice emollient product. I love the packaging. So that's that. Next, I've zoomed this out. I really love the blush, the Tower 28 blush. Put this in my shop, my stash, and wanted to just get more use out of it because honestly, if I told you my thoughts before I started using this again, I would have been like, it's fine. But like, I wasn't getting the hype, but I get the hype now. <laughs> I mean, I liked it when I initially got this, but it's been a while, like I said, since I've used it, and oh my gosh, it is so pretty. I really love this color. I really love the formatting of it, the consistency of it, the pigmentation. It's like not sheer, but also not like too pigmented. I can apply this with a sponge, a brush. I'm using a duo fiber right now, but I've used like a flat top Kabuki from Sigma. I've used this flat top brush from Refer, which is like natural hair. Sometimes I'll just tap on with a finger. Like it doesn't matter. Any of those ways works, any of them. I love this because if I want, it can be my only blush, but also it looks so great as a base for like basically any of the blushes I like to wear on an everyday. So happy I'm rediscovering this and getting a lot more use out of it. That was awesome. Um, I'm gonna add some bronzer, just a little bit. I haven't been overdoing it with the bronzer lately. I'm feeling summer, so I think that's like gonna happen soon, but I've been keeping it a little bit more chill and I'm just using the Fenty Powder Bronzer right now. Next, I'm prepping to show you how I like to use the Peach and Lily. So you've seen all the glowy products I like to use. I'm gonna powder. I've been powdering lately um, just to like not be too glowy throughout the day. I'm using this flatter brush. This is the BK Beauty 105 brush. I dip it into my Laura Mercier powder. I just have a mini right now. And then I tap, I like really press it into the areas I get the shiniest, which are like right here, 
right here, right here, and usually here. T-zone area, classic. I don't like to sweep around the product because for me, that just picks up my foundation and really, it's just not good, okay? And this tends to mattify even more, which usually I, I wouldn't like, but we're gonna use that Peach and Lily. So I like to set that in, then I'll use the Peach and Lily spray. So you see where I'm at right now, okay? Take a good look. I hope it picks up on camera, but it really does just give you this really nice glow. I am still gonna highlight though, because I like to highlight. I'm just using this Too Faced one. Okay, for a super easy brow, cause that's what I would do next. I did this yesterday and it worked really well. I just used the CoverGirl brow spoolie thing. I don't know, what am I trying to say? You know what I'm talking about. I've talked about it about 10 billion times. Only this. No pencils, no anything. I wanna find the, the soap brows that work for me. Uh, the other one's too warm. My last video, I did just it and <laughs> I went a little bit heavier, I guess. And whoa, whoa, whoa. I had some orange brows and that's not really my style. You know, not what I'm trying to do. But this color does look good. So I was like, I'm gonna try to use it like I used the brow soap. And it looked really good and really natural. I've been forgetting to show you the products I don't like that I'm willing to put on my face. So real fast, I'm gonna add some more blush while we're here. This is the MAC one. I've been using like a rougher brush because I feel like you really need to to like get in there. This isn't the worst, but my goodness, it's just... Where is any, I like a subtle, you guys know I like a subtle blush. It's just like not really happening. It's really not happening. And then it's more peachy than I expect. Like I thought it would be more brown, I guess. Just not worth it. Just what? $30, what, what? No, 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 no. For my lids though, I'm gonna zoom you in even more so you don't have to see my hair. This is the metallic taupe shade from Laura Mercier. And I usually really love these. And look, when I first put this on, I feel like it's like, wow, that's promising. Like, okay, pretty. But I just find in the blend out is where I'm kind of just disappointed in its performance. So if you're gonna use this, maybe try your best to only blend out the edges, I guess. I don't know. So as I go in though, this is where I just don't love it as much as I want to. It's not a metallic formula in that it just stays shiny. It's like it starts breaking up into more individual sparkles that aren't as shiny together. The normal formula is better than this. Am I gonna get rid of this? No, but I do think that I will not buy this formula again, and I'll just buy the regular formula. All right, let's do this easy, easy, easy eye look. I'm gonna take the lightest shade. Actually, sometimes I do the darker one, sometimes I do the lighter one, it doesn't matter. I'm going to just put that on a fluffy brush and just brush that over what we laid down right now. Try not to do that, like what the hell? But this is just going over what we lay down. Okay, now I'm gonna take a fluffy blending brush and just blend out. And I might just leave it here today. I don't know, it's like every day I do it, it's a little bit different, but it's just like one or two of the shadows put on my eyeballs, usually just kind of all over in a messy fashion. And I find it just looks really good and put together. I do wanna add a highlighter though uh, to my brow bone so we can get some lift. And then I usually just blend in between the two. You know what, I'm gonna add a little, a tiny bit of the darker shade that's a little bit more matte. It's kind of satiny. Um, I'm gonna add that to my outer corner. These two colors are so similar that you're not getting a ton of difference between them, but I feel like I can still tell. Unfortunately, lately, I've needed to put this cream on my waterline or I will look like a little red-eyed devil, so. And then I'm using my normal eyeliner, which honestly just matches these tones like perfectly and get a little messy and just blend out. I'm gonna run a little bit of the lid shade we put down on my lower lash line on top of that liner. It's like, again, that same color. So I think it looks really good. I'm gonna add some mascara and then we'll do lips and I'm almost done. For lips, I'm just gonna line really fast. 
and then use my Tarte Juicy Peachy Beige Maracuja Lip thing. For my lips, if I just like go in, it's too, it's too much. It's way too much. So then I'll do that and then use my finger and really get it to mesh with my lips. So pretty. Love the way that looks. I'll zoom you in on the eyes. I feel like they're not that blended or something right now. I don't know what happened, but I think it looks good in person. So beautiful. A little bit darker even than I feel like it normally looks on me, but I really love this eye look. So simple. I love that about it. It's like the two things you need <laughs> right there ready to go. You know what I'm saying? So that's the eye look. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing how I use these products. I tried to do a little side part. I'm still... <sighs> Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this. Hopefully I'll have my hair fixed for the intro of the video in the beginning. Um, but thank you so much for watching. I'd love to know what you guys have been loving, some things we should avoid. And other than that, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.